I killed an air sun today. Naturally, I did not tell my lover about it. When I got home, I was thinking, Scott free, Scott free. My lover was lying on the couch. The TV was on the sports channel, but he wasn't watching TV. My near son died today, he said. I felt a tingle when you did it. I don't know why you did it or how you could. I don't know either, I said. But I had my reasons. American women have the highest maternal mortality rate in the developed world, despite the US spending more per capita on maternity care than any other nation. While infant death rates in America are at historic lows, the, what do you call them? Women who carry such infants to term are more at risk than they have been in decades. Why don't you print out the ultrasound pictures in a pastel frame? Make me take them home and hang them on my wall as a reminder of the night the ninth his hand pressed so hard against my shoulder blade I felt more intimacy with the asphalt. My story has to do with family doing what was best for my family. I found out at the end of September 2010 that I was pregnant with my first child and everything was fine. Till it wasn't. The doctor explained that my water broke at 22 weeks and one day. And the baby was still able to grow, but didn't have a heartbeat. In her groundbreaking documentary, Birth Rate, filmmaker Sibia Tamarkin sheds light on one particular phenomenon, childbirth. From forced cesareans to hemorrhaging due to medical oversight, it is clear that neither the medical field nor lawmakers are trying to alleviate the jarring statistics of maternal mortality in America. In fact, the CDC reports that 60% of maternal deaths are preventable. Through the Prose, Near Sun by Rebecca Curtis, the Drama, Birthright, by Sibia Tamarkin. The Poetry, A Letter to Oklahoma Lawmakers, by Lauren Zaniga, in the article. Samantha B. on Maternal Mortality. A program. Because my ability to create life should not devalue my own. And I asked the doctor, at what point do we go from being good parents, from doing whatever we need to save our child, to being selfish, putting our child through unnecessary things for our own sake? So we asked the doctor if we could go ahead and induce labor. She explained that a law had just passed in Nebraska. Any provider participated in an abortion after 20 weeks it was a felony charge. How is it that the U.S. is spending more per capita on maternity care and getting the worst results? Because most of the spending and focus is going towards the babies. We're kind of meh about the nagging husks that incubate them. So why don't you knit the baby a sweater? Make me take it out and smell it on the anniversary of this day for the rest of my life to remind me that I chose to be a murderer instead of bringing a baby into a world where we kill in the name of freedom and imprison people in the name of life. That afternoon, we had to go to a wedding. We arrived late. Um, the place where they had the reception was the banquet hall of an old church. My lover said he couldn't eat because he was so nervous about his speech. So I held his hand under the table. He shook it off. We were sitting with some people I had never met and I was hoping he'd introduce me, but he didn't. With my second child, I was in active labor when the doctor came in and gave me the ultimatum. He said, you can stay and have the cesarean or you can leave. These are your options and it was clearly against everything I wanted, but what will you do? Stay and have the cesarean that you don't want or medically need or leave. But go where? My love walked to the podium, but stood atop a granite platform at the front of the room. There was silence. My near son died today, he said. And, and he pointed at me. She did it. The room was full of large circular tables, all filled with people staring at me. I mean, if you really want to show me that you believe in faith, family, and freedom, then why don't you come along for the ride? I could have used you that night at the football game and tell me I'm special so that when he hands me the next drink, 
I don't look to the bottom of it for approval. Take me home when he's done. Give me the words to say to my parents when I come out of the bathroom with a plus sign on the stick and he won't even talk to me. Then he brought in another physician. The two of them released the wheels to the bed and rolled me out the room and I was screaming and crying, but they didn't pay any attention. I didn't sign anything. How could they be doing this? How could they be giving me a cesarean I didn't give my consent for? The issue is not being prioritized. Despite the staggering statistics and centrality of women to, you know, the continuation of human existence, it's mind-blowing that the dangers of childbearing are treated as such a low priority, especially considering a mere 100% of Americans are the result of a female pregnancy. Tell me what to do. Sit with me at the clinic, give me the revelation that the blip on the screen is actually a baby. Take me home when I change my mind. Take me to the doctor every month. Hold my hand in the delivery room. I will name him after you if you help me with my homework when he's crying in the next room. Give me food stamps, pay my gas bills, put him in an after school program where he learns he can sell my pain pills. Have mercy on him in the courtroom. And give me the strength when they sentenced him, I knew one thing to do was not seem afraid. You assassinate the assassin. You punch a bully, but what do you do when your son is dead? The crowd moves forward and hands yanked my dress. I begged my lover to help me, please. Help me, please stop touching me. But that was all I got to say. It's frustrating because many of the solutions are so simple. We know the most frequent causes of death and in many cases how to fix them. But much like with the abortion debate in which pro-life advocates emphasize the rights of fetuses over the living, breathing women carrying them, this avoidable epidemic is a result of a lack of respect for women as human beings. It's time for America to decide. Do we care about human life? Or not. So if you want to play God and write your Bible on my organs, you better be there. When I am on my knees pleading for relief from your morality.